The Paragon Warsuits are here. If you want some tips before painting your own, then you've come to the right place. In this video, I will be sharing my approach to painting the Paragon Warsuits in the style of the Bloody Rose. Before I get started, this is not the first painting tutorial I've done on war suits. If you want to see my approach to Morven Vol, the video is on my channel now. In assembling my war suits, I opted to do very few sub assemblies. Initially, I was leaving the bases off, but decided to glue them before doing the base coating, and this didn't really hold me back. The front panel of the chest plate is only stuck on with some putty at the moment. There isn't a lot of room to maneuver the head into place, so being able to remove the front panel will make this much easier. I also left off the shoulder weapons simply because they would be really hard to paint in that small gap without going over the shoulder pads as well. Next thing I did was roughly plan out the colour scheme in Affinity Designer. I recently released a video showing my full process of doing this, so if you want to see this in more detail, uh, that's available now on my channel as well. Next I realised I had a few options for how I could base coat the war suits. I didn't know which method would work best, so I started by testing my schemes on some plastic spoons. This part of the process can take a little while, but I find the end result is a lot nicer if you can get the base coats right and looking how you want. It may seem weird to start off a painting guide by painting spoons, but I feel it is important to understand how people decide on colour schemes, and not just always viewing the end result. If you're learning, it can feel like the videos you watch are full of colour magicians. But really, we just test things. A lot. I wasn't sure if a metallic base or a black base would be the best undercoat to bring out the highlights. The findings were that pure black had a much better contrast with the highlights, however silver had less discoloration. I tried a few more combinations including a red primer, but the scheme I decided on the end was a high gloss black base coat white ink xenophil highlight, and a crimson red ink coat. So let's start by painting the actual models. This particular black gloss surface primer needs a few coats to work. My non-gloss primer goes on really dark straight away, but this one feels more like uh, layering greys until you get to black. I think it took me at least four or five layers until the model started to look right. And don't they look magnificent? The gloss really helps them look metallic, which will help a lot in the following layers as I'll be using inks that have some op opacity to them. The first ink is the Liquitex Titanium White. I'm going to shoot this through an airbrush from a high angle to do a zenithal highlight. The main reason I like using inks for this step is they tend to be smoother and less speckling than regular white paint. I think this has something to do with the pigments being smaller. The inks also work really well through the airbrush, without the need for thinning. Just put them in and shoot. There are the highlighted models. You can see that the highlights really help bring out the detail. Before doing the next layer, it is important to let the inks dry fully. Otherwise they may run and mix with the following layers of ink, and this can look a bit odd. Next layer is a Liquitex, a word I do not wish to pronounce, crimson. This ink is a bit less transparent than the white ink, but it still works really well and lets through colour from the under layers. I'm going to work around the layers making sure it isn't too thick, but also making sure it isn't too light, so that areas look pink where the whites are, or brown where the dark areas are. Concentrate on all the areas of the armour. Overspray is okay, but I don't need a lot of red on the cloth, the sword, the weapon, or the ornaments. And here are our bloody rose red war suits, almost ready for the hand painting steps. There's just one more very important step when working with inks. I'm going to lay down a coat of gloss varnish over the entire model. It may seem unusual to varnish so early in the painting process, but this helps to do a few things. Firstly, the inks and the base coat are still very thin and can easily be rubbed off or damaged through the painting process. Secondly, Unlike paint, the inks can run fairly easily. There's nothing worse than coating your model in some null oil to shade the recesses, 
only to find that all your white ink from the Xenophil has now run into the recesses and you have super bright recesses. This is the opposite of what you were trying to achieve. So the varnish step just helps to lock everything in so that there's no changes in these coats as you do coats over the top of it. Now I'm going to start with the heads by giving them a base coat of Citadel Wraith Bone. Then I laid down a base shade on the faces using Gulliman Flesh Contrast Paint. To do the hair I'm using equal parts of Eandon Yellow and Skeleton Horde. If you want less of a He-Man look in your Bloody Rose Sisters then try a ratio more like 3 parts Skeleton Horde to 1 part Yellow. To highlight the raised features on the face I'm going to use some Pallid Witch Flesh, but try not to use too much. Now to paint the collars black and that's the faces done. As mentioned earlier, the chest plates are not yet glued, so I'm going to pull those off now so that I can put in the heads and glue it shut. Make sure you align the heads in the direction you want them to be looking. The direction of the torso in relation to the hips will let you know what direction they are looking. There we have it, the heads are in and it's all glued shut. Now I'm just going to use some plain matte white, any brand will do, to go over the tabard and any of the features I want to cover in contrast paint. This may take a few coats before you can no longer see the very dark colours underneath. The main reason I'm going with white is so that I can put decals on the cloth. If I went with a black cloth then the red decals wouldn't stand out very well. Now for the long and tedious part. I'm going to use Retributor Armor to work around all of the metallic trims and details. With the standard theme this is normally done with silver, however on red armor I feel going with two warm colors ties it together a lot better than going straight from red to silver. But that's just a personal preference. It looks a little bit out of place at the moment but once shading and highlights are done it should tie together beautifully. And here are all the gold details. I think it works pretty well, but looks way too clean at the moment. Next I went back to my trusty painting tube to prepare the shoulder weapons. These will be fairly straightforward, I'm going to use a lead belcher as a base coat and then do highlights with iron breaker using a dry brush. For dry brushing I like to use a softer makeup brush. I find it works a lot better than dry brushing with a regular brush and the results are a lot cleaner. When dry brushing try to remove most of the paint on paper towel, then apply using downward strokes on the model. The downward strokes help place the highlights in areas where the light would naturally hit. Before attaching them to the model I'm also going to apply null oil in the recesses to bring out the detail. Leave the weapons to dry before gluing them to the model. I should mention that if you plan to magnetize any of these swappable components, there is a video on this topic on the Sword and Steel YouTube channel. While the weapons dry, I've come back to the cloth using Apothecary White contrast paint to shade the inner folds. This will help make the cloth feel more natural than just being pure white. Make sure to keep an eye on the contrast paint for pooling and remove any excess with your brush. At this point I have now glued the shoulder weapons in place and have started some of the basing using leftover cork and skulls from the Morven Vile video that I did last week. Now I'm going to use Iron Breaker to do the silver parts of the shoulders. I've seen some people do these gold as well but aesthetically I feel I wanted the shoulders to look more different to the rest of the war suit. Also it is more consistent with how I've painted my other Bloody Rose units. Going back to a black colour, I'm using the regular non-gloss black primer for this. It's time to start colouring the weapons. At first they won't look very metallic, but once we do the highlights they should look perfect.
for the nozzle I'm using Canoptic Alloy. I like this colour because it's like a light silver, but it has a bit of warmth to it. So it should work well as a base for the nozzle burn effect that, we'll, that I'll show you through shortly. Next I'm going to finish my basing. I won't go into detail about how I do this, uh, because I've already done that in the Morven Vale video. If you want to see how I base miniatures, that will be the best place to look. It's currently on my channel. Now that the nozzles are dry, I'm going to use a Cryptek Armour Shade Gloss. This works kind of like a shade paint, but it's a bit more aggressive in that it completely changes how the metal looks. I'm focusing on making it thicker at the front of the nozzle and lighter at the back to mimic how nozzle burn would naturally look. Once this is done, I have an experiment I've been meaning to try. I'm mixing equal parts Drakenhof Nightshade with an electric blue shifter. If you haven't seen shifters before, it is a highly reflective paint that tints the reflections in a range of colours depending on the angle you're looking at it. I'm going to concentrate this paint towards the front half of the nozzle. On video, it is very hard to show off how well the shifters work, but in person the effect is a lot more striking, and the blue shade it is mixed with helps sell the effect, while still being very subtle. Now I'm on to the shading step. As per usual, silvers get a coat of null oil and golds get a coat of gullum and flesh contrast paint. Make sure those coats are very light because both of these shades will dull down the metallics. The main thing you are trying to do here is bring out some of the detail that has been hiding by having a very consistent coat of metallic paint with uh, not a lot of variation. If you apply your shade too heavy, don't be afraid to wash off your brush, come back and remove some of the excess shade. Now that all the recess shading is done, it's time to highlight all of the metallics with Stormheart Silver. To do this, I'll once again be using my makeup dry brush. This step will take a while to do right. When you're removing most of the paint onto your paper towel, you do need to constantly reload the brush. If you work quickly, then you should be able to keep picking up paint from the paper so that less of it is wasted. At this point, if you want your war suits to look a little more weathered, then you can use a sponge with some Stormhose Silver to dab a few areas to make it look like battle damage. Perhaps even use some Nylac Oxide on the armour around uh, the joints on the legs. There are a lot of interesting options you can do to weather it a bit more. Once you are happy with how the warsuits look, give them a final coat of gloss varnish to seal in the model and bring back some of the shine that was lost from shading. Then use some matte varnish on the faces and on the cloth to remove shine from those areas. And here they are, Paragon Warsuits of the Bloody Rose. Overall this isn't my favourite paint job, or the most creative, but aesthetically I think it will fit in pretty well with my existing Bloody Rose detachment. And I hope by doing this video it's given you some ideas of how you can paint your own. If you're wondering how big the war suits are compared to regular sister units, here's a comparison with some troops in front. So these war suits are quite big on the battlefield. I also have a comparison with Morven Vol. While the war suit isn't much bigger, the raised base and wide stance does make her feel like she's towering over the other war suits. One more thing, with these painting tutorials I'd like to give an update on Hobby Life, my free iOS app for tracking your hobby progress. Recently Dana Howe did a video describing a seasonal system to challenge yourself to complete your backlog and reduce the pile of shame. At the time I was already working on a seasonal scoring system for Hobby Life and figured, why reinvent the wheel? So the shame golf method of scoring is now available in Hobby Life and does most of the work automatically. Just tell it when to start and end the season and any of the adjustments that you need to make. Next in Hobby Life, I'm working on a UI revamp 
to fit some of the new features like seasons into the UI more naturally. If you're a Patreon, you can request a beta invite to test these features before they become public. Just hit me up on the Discord. Okay, thanks for watching and sticking with me to the end. What models would you like to see me paint? Let me know in the comments and subscribe so you don't miss the end results. Thank you.